I have been slightly obsessing about canvases and panels lately, and I'd love to share what I've discovered and also what I think are the quality and not so quality surfaces that you might encounter when you're painting today. This is the K2 frame kit from Masterpiece. This is what it's gonna look like when finished, a 72 inch canvas. Something that's unusual with Masterpiece and speaks to the quality of the frames is everything is a solid piece of wood, even the supports. So on the left are the supports and right here is one of the sides. Uh, this is gonna be a canvas with a depth of two and a half to three inches. I'll show you what it looks like constructed in a moment. Here is the Masterpiece K2 frame constructed. I'll show you the corners. So the corners are pretty square. And we'll test all of them. That one's pretty good. So this one is not quite square, and I'm not sure if that's user error or the kit, but you can barely tell, especially at this size. This is a canvas that I put together using Jack Richeson, aka Best Heavy Duty Stretcher Bars, along with a Best Heavy Duty Cross Brace. So as you can see here, the stretcher bars have a finger joint joining different pieces of wood together. So it's not solid wood like the Masterpiece stretcher bars. I've noticed that these canvases can sometimes shift at slight angles because the corners don't always fit perfectly together. So I like to reinforce all of the corners with a stainless steel metal bracket. This helps the corners stay square at 90 degree angles. Um, let's flip it around. So you can see on this side, it's a pretty good fit. Again, I haven't had any issues with using these stretcher bars, but I'm not sure how over time they'll hold up. I would suggest using the Masterpiece stretcher bars because they are solid wood and fit together really well and the price point is not too much different. I painted this Great Horned Owl on a Frederick's Pro Dixie cotton canvas, and I'd say it has a medium tooth. I'll get close so you can see the texture. So there's some texture, and this is after me adding a few coats of gesso and two to three layers of oil paint. I'll show you the back of it. It's a solid canvas. I, you know, I'd put it on par with Blix Premier cotton canvases. Uh, you can see that the supports are not solid pieces of wood, like Masterpiece, but the side pieces are. I like the canvas. Again, you can see more of the rough texture before gesso is added. I like that it's back stapled. Back stapled canvases are easy to remove and restretch if reframing is ever needed in the future. This is one of Blick's premier cotton canvases. And I'll zoom in so you can get a sense of the texture. Let's see, there we go. So it's pretty similar to the Frederick's Dixie Pro canvas and the Michaels artist loft canvases as far as texture goes. You get to see the back. So it's back stapled like the Dixie Pro cotton canvases, uh, pretty solid stretcher bars, solid wood. In bigger sizes, you're gonna have supports going across. Uh, Blick also makes a studio cotton canvas. The Premier canvas is gonna be 
higher quality and a heavier weight canvas. Uh, it's nice, both the Studio and the Premier canvases come in three different depths, as you can see there. You've got traditional at 7 eighths of an inch, inch and a half, which is what this canvas is, and then you have two and three eighths of an inch. But these are great for abstract painting. Unfortunately, I can't recommend these Artist Loft canvases from Michaels anymore. Too many of them have issues like they warp or the supports aren't enough to prevent bowing. So as you can see, uh, the, the sides and the supports are not as heavy duty as the Fredericks, Blick, or Masterpiece canvases. Um, the, the canvas itself is not back stapled. And on the sides, the canvas is not wrapped. You can kind of see it's, it's cut. It's cut all the way up to the edge. So if you ever needed to remove the canvas and restretch it, that could be a real problem. It's a nice canvas otherwise, like the quality is, is archival, but being on the frame that it's on can be a problem over time. Uh, also, a professional artist friend of mine, shout out to Ginger Fox, was pointing out that this in here, between the canvas and the wood, so like right there, this rubber part can disintegrate over time, you know, and cause issues with the tightness of the canvas and bowing as well. Uh, she suggested, you know, to anyone who's using this canvas to put silicone caulking in that space to sort of prevent uh, deterioration and any issues that might come up over time. This is Masterpiece's Tahoe canvas. And here are the specs. You can see that it's a heavier weight canvas than both the Fredericks Dixie Pro and the Blick Premier cotton canvases. Here is the texture. So this is a finer tooth. It's smoother than the other canvases as well. And this is really sort of, I, I want to call it buttery. It's a pleasure to paint on. And I'll show you the, the back in a moment. Here's the back. Solid wood all the way around. Just extremely well built, heavy duty. You know, you can paint abstract, you can paint realistic. I love these canvases. This is the Carmel canvas from Masterpiece. It's a lighter weight than the Tahoe. Um, it also has a pretty smooth surface, but I would actually say that the the Tahoe is smoother, even though the Carmel is marketed as portrait smooth. Still a lovely canvas. Uh, if you look at the back side, even when you're working on a three quarter of an inch profile, the construction is sturdy from top to bottom and in the side as well. I highly recommend getting these swatch books from Masterpiece. They're a dollar each, maybe a few dollars with shipping, but especially if you don't live close to a high quality art store, these swatch books are great because you get samples of all their different canvases and you can see what their different textures are like. So this is specifically for their canvas panels. They have a lot of different kinds, both in linen and cotton. Most of these are gonna be on, a, on the smoother side, um, but the Santa Cruz, for example, has a little bit of texture. I think this is a favorite of plain air painters. 
the PAU linen is incredibly smooth. So if you are a portrait artist, this one is great, as is this Artfix linen that's oil primed. Um, if you are an acrylic painter, you want to use acrylic primed. And if you're an oil painter, you can use acrylic or oil primed. Ventura is one that I really like using. It's pretty smooth, oil primed. It's great for realistic work, as is the Malibu. Here is one of Masterpiece's Ventura Hardcore Pro panels. I'll zoom in so you can see the specs. Essentially, it's archival quality and it's made to resist bending, warping, yellowing, and the impacts of moisture and temperature fluctuations. Here's the texture. As you can see, there's, there's a bit of tooth, but not too much. I like a little bit of tooth, uh, but everybody has their own preference. I'm not sure if you can tell, but linen fibers are different than cotton fibers, and they're, they're longer and stronger, and essentially that's why linen has been the historical choice for many artists. Modern sizing and priming has apparently reduced some of those differences, but linen remains the preference of many artists. Here is the side profile. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. And here's the back. If you're looking to paint on an even smoother surface than a canvas panel, you might take a look at hardboard panels. So all of these that you're looking at here are made by ampersand. Now, if you are an oil painter, gesso board is probably your best bet. So I'll tilt this in the light. Hopefully I can capture the texture here. Um, yeah, there we go. It's really smooth. The nice thing about gesso board is that it's completely ready to go. It requires no additional preparation and you can literally just unwrap it and start painting. Um, if you're an acrylic painter, you can use encaustic board. And I'll try to tilt this in the light as well. It's hard to see the texture because there <laughs> really isn't any. Um, it's just super smooth. You can use, so if you're painting with acrylics, you can use encaustic board or clay board. There's also hard board. Um, this is fine for acrylics or oils, but you need to seal and prime it first. This one is kind of like if you're painting on basswood. So this is a cradled basswood panel that has been sealed and primed and is ready to paint on. This would be a good choice for anyone who wants a little bit of like wood green texture. And I've used a white gesso, but if you actually want some of the wood grain texture to show through, Windsor and Newton makes a great clear gesso. One thing that I should point out is that these hardboards and canvas panels are known as rigid supports. So rigid supports are inflexible. As you can see, you know, when you rest your hand on a rigid support, it's not gonna be impacted by the pressure of your hand. Whereas a canvas like this one, when you rest your hand on it, it's gonna sort of press down with that pressure. So a conservator might suggest using a rigid support like a canvas panel or a hardboard because over time, paint will crack less due to movement. Hardboards and canvas panels are also gonna be less impacted by moisture damage and temperature fluctuation. So this is something to consider when you're choosing a surface to paint on. 
Another thing to think about when you're choosing a surface to paint on is the frame that your finished work is going to go in. So on the left here, we've got a gallery profile canvas, which is an inch and a half deep. And on the right, we've got a gesso board panel, which is roughly an eighth of an inch deep. Some people will put the canvas on the wall just as it is, and it might look fine, but most of the time, you're gonna see it in something like this. This is a typical floater frame. And when you put the canvas inside it, it fits perfectly. The panel, on the other hand, is probably gonna look better in something like this. This is a more decorative frame, and it's gonna cover up about a quarter inch of the panel on all sides. So this is something to keep in mind when you're painting, and when you're thinking about what frame is gonna look best with your painting, more realistic work might look better with the panel and the corresponding decorative frame, whereas abstract work is usually gonna go well on a canvas like this and a floater frame. Obviously, it's up to you and your own preferences, but it's something to think about before you get started. In sum, we've got a lot of options. I feel like learning as an artist is a never-ending journey. <laughs> if there's any surface that I mentioned that you want to test out, I added product links below. Also, I'd love to hear from you. If there's a surface that is like your go-to, something that you really enjoy painting on, please comment. I'd love to know and test it out myself.